In this segment, we are going to talk about the impact testing. Based off the requirement of the A semi-code section 8, we need to assess any pressure vessel that we are designing to see if it is needs to be impact tested or is going to be exempted from the impact testing. So if I'm having this plate, which is a SA516 grade 70, if I uh, drop this, uh, this piece of the plate from six feet on a concrete floor, it uh, might, I hear a noise, but nothing can happen for this if I drop this. But if I submerge this uh, carbon steel material as a 516 grade 70 to the liquid nitrogen, and then you know the liquid nitrogen, almost the temperature is minus 347 degree Fahrenheit. And I submerge there and stay for a few minutes to get this stabilized. And the temperature of this material turns to the minus 300 degree Fahrenheit or even less and then I take it out and I drop this on a concrete floor or hit it a little bit to the concrete floor this might be brick I have no doubt it's going to break in several pieces so it's going to break if you look at the uh, uh, the 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 area that the failure happened and to the surface of uh, the, the point that it's, it's uh, broken, we're going to see a very sharp edges, like a, uh, the way the glasses breaks. So this is a thing that is not uh, desired for uh, design purposes. We need the material have a good resistance about the impact and the lower temperature. I said minus 300 degree Fahrenheit, but for our imaginary pressure vessel, now the temperature is Minimum design metal temperature is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. So we need to analyze, we need to assess to see if our pressure vessel is going to be impact tested or is going to be exempted from impact testing. So impact testing is uh, what we are doing in here to see if our material has a enough toughness about the impact uh, or uh, any any shock in, in lower temperature, which is uh, for our case is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit in here. And you know, uh, the material transfers from the ductile phase to the brittle phase in a certain temperature. So it's different from the, any material. So for some material, they are transferred from the ductile phase to the brittle phase at minus 10 degree Fahrenheit. For some of them with a different alloy, they might transfer at the minus 60 degree Fahrenheit. They have a more uh, toughness regarding the impact. So it it's depends on the alloy material we are using. Also, the, uh, the thickness is playing an important role in here. For example, for this material SA516 grade 70, you can use this material up to minus 30 degree Fahrenheit when the thickness is one inch. But if you go to the 3.25 uh, inch, which is our nominal thickness, we can use this material safely on the, uh, uh, up to four, 14 degree Fahrenheit. I put in this screen, you can see. So this material can operate on 14 degree Fahrenheit uh, without doing any impact testing. It means at the 14 degree Fahrenheit with the 3.25 inch as safe to work. And it's not going to be any, uh, you know, susceptibility to the brittle fracture at this temperature with this thickness. But if you go to the one inch, a lower thickness, we can use this material up to minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. So there's a different factors in here. We don't want to open the metallurgy in here, but what we want the uh, uh, the subject of the metallurgy in here. But what we want trying to say in here is that the material transfers from the brittle, uh, sorry, the ductile phase to the brittle phase in a certain temperature and it's not going to be safe when it is in the brittle uh, the phase. What happened to the Titanic ship is, is the same story. It was, it, the material is used wasn't, uh, didn't have enough toughness at that certain temperature uh, in, in, in the sea. So when it's hit the iceberg, and instead of a deformation that we expected to create a dent in the ship body and or even the, create a hole in one point with the deformation, uh, like uh, uh, iceberg pushed uh, the, the, the body of the ship and, and made a dent on that, 
uh, and create a hole, but it didn't happen. It caused a crack and the crack uh, propagated and a brittle fracture happened and uh, caused the, the sinking of the ship. So the same things happens in here. We are having a pressure vessel in here. This might go to the industry, works for 30 years and exists a, you know, a micro crack somewhere in a, one of these well. And by the chance we couldn't, uh, you know, we couldn't uh, catch that micro crack by the radiography testing and it's existed and works for uh, 30 years and, and nothing happens. But if it goes to the lower temperature and uh, a shock, a mechanical shock happens by, you know, draining the liquid and pushing the new liquids and going, uh, you know, fluctuation or a shock or something like that, that's little micro crack marks, uh, might propagate or a, a, a uh, like a, a, a impact on the pressure vessel, it might be propagate that micro crack and and uh, you know change to the catastrophic brittle fracture like the one you can see in the screen. As a pressure vessel, uh, something happened, a shock or something, and caused the brittle fracture. Even this happens in the hydrostatic testing that we are going to review in upcoming segments. Sometimes the weather is so cold and then they make the hydrostatic testing at the, at the lower temperature, uh, you know, and, and close to the minimum design metal, metal temperature and sometimes that cause a brittle fracture just in the shop before leaving the pressure vessel from the manufacturing shop and it breaks like the photo you can see in my right. It's happened in the, in the manufacturing shop at the hydrostatic testing. So the brittle fracture is is, is is very dangerous because there's a no notice you know in a doctor fracture you having a deformation and then a failure happens here you don't have any deformation it's directly goes to the failure with the sharp edges so the test is done uh, we are we are going to perform in here or we are analyzing you know if we didn't get exempted we have to perform is a uh, the 10 by 10, you can see it in the screen. It's a test specimen. I'm having some things in here, you know, like this specimen. I'm going to run this small pieces of a video on the side. Then you can see the, the cross section, the, the area that the failure happened. And uh, this is a doctor fracture. Actually, you can see doctor fractures that have a good, uh, good the toughness. Uh, on, on this material because this is a tested at the room temperature so I didn't expect this to be a brittle fracture but this is the same material it's completely separated in the impact testing and it's still there's a good uh, uh, sign of the ductal fracture but you can see it's uh, the hammer hit these things and separated these things but couldn't separate this and you can see it, they are still one piece uh, test a specimen how they do the test? I mean, there's a there's a, a lots of videos in the YouTube. You can go watch those videos and then come back in here because we are not in here to explain the procedure of the impact testing. We are here to review the ASME Code Section Eight Division One requirements regarding the impact testing. But uh, as a, a short explanation, there is a hammer, a very hem heavy hammer. And then uh, there's a notch on these uh, uh, specimens, and then these hammers hits the back of this test specimen. Of course, this specimen already gone to the minimum design metal temperature. So if our minimum design metal temperature is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, this specimen should go to the uh, liquid nitrogen or uh, carbon dioxide and go to the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. So the conventional method is that there's a bat over there. They, they, they hold these things with the instrument and submerge to the nitrogen, but it might go to the uh, minus, uh, way below minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. There's a very advanced uh, cooling machines that use the same uh, uh, liquid nitrogen or di uh, carbon dioxide and the, the cooling process is performed, but it's, it's under control. So when you are uh, uh, when you are adjust on minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, they're going to use uh, a liquid concentration or the process to take this temperature to the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit and not minus 35 degree Fahrenheit. But the conventional method is that they are just submerged on 
on a liquid, a, liquid, a, liquid, a nitrogen liquid, and then, uh, then, then put in the machine. So if this hammers uh, hit this test specimen from the back side, the notch is from the this side and from the back side. And depends how much this after this breaks this. Uh, the, the, the breaking is not happen on this test specimen, but when it breaks, it goes up. So if it goes too high, it it's indicates that this test specimen uh, received a little energy to break these things. And this hit this, breaks this, and goes high. But sometimes it breaks this, it stops there like the one happened for him, or breaks this, it goes a little bit high and then returns back. So this indicates to me this the uh, specimen received lots of energy from that hammer so uh, the, which is consumed those energy and it wasn't able to go uh, very high because it uh, gave those energy to the breaking of this test specimen so there's a graduation uh, sheet over there and it measures now there's a very advanced uh, advanced machine impact machine how much this goes high the machine uh, measures that and uh, calculates the foot pound value for absorbed energy for breaking this test specimen and then we can go and compare with the acceptance criteria so uh, like i said uh, we are uh, we have to assess any uh, pressure in, a, in any pressure vessel design process to see if our pressure vessel is going to be subjected to the impact testing or we're going to be exempted from the impact testing. Well, we're going to review in here to see in what cases we're going to be uh, have uh, subjected to the impact testing in, in, in what temperature or thickness combination or by the chance if we are uh, have to perform the impact testing what is acceptance criteria how many test specimens we need to uh, make for the impact testing before going to the uh, to the exemption process uh, the asm section 8 division 1 on the ug66 divided the all carbon steel and low alloy steel material on the four groups so it means you are having the four baskets with the and you have written all the name of the UCS table 23 on in a, in a piece of the paper and put on these baskets. So you are having the basket A, basket B, basket C and basket D. So you don't have any more uh, material in here. All the material divided on these four baskets. Consider the ones with the high strength. Uh, regarding the brittle fracture or with the high test toughness value goes to the basket number D. The, the lower than that goes to the basket number C and the lower than that goes to the basket number B and lower than that goes to the basket number A. So from the brittle fracture points of view, the basket A is the weakest one and the basket D is the strongest one. So it comes with the curve. They said the curve D, curve C, curve B, curve A. You consider that curves as the groups or these baskets that I explained in here. So we are having the four groups or four curves that we're going to assess based on those curves to see if we are subjected to the impact testing or we are exempted from the impact testing and any material in the carbon steel and low alloy steel on the UCS uh, section are assigned to the one of these curves. The process as you can see is in my right. First we are going to go to the UG20F and we assess to see if our pressure vessel gets exempted from impact testing. If we are exempted, we're going to stop the assessment and then we are going to indicate in the design documents that the impact testing is exempted from for this pressure vessel with this minimum design metal temperature, with this thickness and with this material. But by the chance, if we didn't get exempted, then you have to go to the next step, which is, uh, is UCS 66A. Again, you're going to continue assessment to see if you get exempt from uh, this, uh, from the impact testing. If you get exempted by the UCS 66A, you're good to go. If not, you have to go to the next step. And the next step is the UCS 66B. You're going to assess 
uh, based off the UCS 66B and to see if you can get exempted. If you exempted, stop the assessment. You don't need to proceed. But by the chance, if you uh, couldn't get exempted for, by the UCS 66B, then you have to go to the next step, which is the last step, and it's the UCS 68C. If you exempted, good to go. If not, then you have to perform the impact testing on the on the, the on the plate material which uh, not be exempted also you have to qualify your wps with the impact testing we're going to discuss those things in the asme section 9 but you know based off the asme section 9 when you are having a welding procedure you qualify that welding procedure with the two tension test two root bend test and two face bend test but if your pressure vessel subjected to the impact testing then your WPS also need to be qualified by the impact testing. It means in addition to those testing that I named them, you have to also perform three specimens or one set on uh, heat affected zone, at the heat affected zone, and the three specimens, another set on the weld metal, and then qualify your WPS, and then you're going to be allowed to make a welding based off the qualified welding procedure. So this is the process. Uh, when you are subjected to the impact testing, you're gonna do the impact testing on plate material or any non-exempted material that is used on the pressure vessel, and then your WPS and PQR also needs to be qualified by the impact testing. So if you already have the WPS and PQR 10 years ago or long time ago or weeks ago, whatever, and qualified with the impact testing, then you can use that WPS. But if you don't have uh, available WPS and PQR to be qualified, a WPS to qualify with the impact test, then also you need some time and uh, more work to qualify your WPS with the impact testing. Now, for our imaginary pressure vessel with the thickness 3.25 inch, and uh, with the minimum design metal temperature minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, we are going to start the assessment to see if we can get exempted from impact testing. The first process, as you can see in the screen, is UG20F. So UG20F as says, you know, you, you have to come in here and says for P number one, group number one or two, and the thickness uh, which is not exceeding half inch for material listed in curve A and for a material which listed in the curve B, C, D up to one inch exempted. So no more assessment. So if you are in the curve A and your material thickness is half inch, you're exempted. And if you are in the curve B, C, D and you are on uh, your material thickness is a one inch, then you are exempted. So you know the the SA516 grade 70 is a P number one group number two uh, is on curve D is belong to the curve D is classified on the curve D but the grade 60 and 65 are on uh, curve D. so you can see the SA516 grade 70 is P number one and group number two and 60 and 61 are group number one. So they are listed, the, uh, the grade 70 is listed to the um, curve number D. So for curve number D, we can get exempted from the impact testing up to one inch, but our thickness is 3.25 inch. So we can't get exempted by the first item, but just, uh, just assume it's okay, we want to review the other, other condition as well. The second condition says the hydrostatic testing is required. So sometimes you might perform the pneumatic testing in a, in a certain condition. We're going to review uh, this point later on in the, when we are talking about the pressure testing. You have the hydrostatic testing and pneumatic testing, and it's not the optional to use the pneumatic testing. But in a certain condition, you can use the pneumatic testing instead of the hydrostatic testing. This is says to you, you can you can use that opportunity over there. It's it's if you want you, you use the UG twenty F, you should forget about the pneumatic testing. It should be absolutely uh, the hydrostatic testing. Also says the design the maximum design 
temperature shouldn't be warmer than 650 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as I remember, our design temperature was 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are also hit with this one. Nor colder than minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Our minimum design metal temperature is minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see we are hit with the, the condition number one. We are being affected with the condition number three. We can't, we can't use them by one and three. But let's, let's continue and see what's the other item included on the UG20F. The other one is the no thermal or a mechanical shock loading. So if, if you want to use the UG20F, your pressure vessel uh, shouldn't be on some loading like a thermal loading or mechanical shock you know sometimes the compressor works and and makes some surge on the pressure vessels and creates some vibration or some loading or thermal shock sometimes the temperatures go 700 degree fahrenheit comes to the 100 degree fahrenheit and some temperature fluctuation so if you are your pressure vessel is going to be work in that condition so you can't use the ug20f so for our case for our pressure vessel we don't have those uh, issues but generally this is a, one of the condition that you need to be considered when you want to use the ug20f the the, the last one is a no cyclic loading. Uh, uh, cyclic loading is a regular, uh, 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 in, in a time base, uh, the, uh, the fluctuation of the temperature or pressure. You know, it's in a, like in a, in a minute goes to the 600 degree Fahrenheit and then comes to the 400 degree Fahrenheit. It's, it's a very regular, you know, loading that uh, uh, is, is considered in the design of the pressure vessel. So if you are, your pressure vessel is going to work on that condition, also you can use the UG20F. But the one we affected by is the thickness because our material SA516 grade 70 uh, belongs to the curve number D. And the curve number D can be exempted up to one inch, but our thickness is 3.25 inch. So we have to move forward to see if we can get exempted by the UCS 66A. I put in a screen a curve, and this is a, a curve that you need to make an assessment. And the vertical axis on the left side, you can see it's, it's the minimum design middle temperature. And, and the horizontal axis is the thickness. So, and there's a four curve, curve A in the top, curve B in the below, curve C below, uh, below of the curve B and the curve D below the curve C. As you remember, I said that the curve D material, the material that assigned to the curve D material are more tougher than the material assigned to the curve C and the material assigned to the curve C are stronger than the material assigned to the curve B and the curve B stronger than from the toughness point of view to the curve A. Now, well, what we are going to do in here, we're going to draw two lines. My thickness is 3.25 inch. I'm going to draw a line from the 3.25 inch to cross the curve D. And then I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, draw a line from minimum design metal temperature, which mine condition in the de design documents is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. I'm going to draw a horizontal line and they're going to cross each other below the curve D. As you can see in the screen, they are crossing each other below the curve. So this is indicates to me I have to perform impact testing. I'm not getting exempted because if would have uh, if it would have located or placed on the curve, exactly on the curve D, or any point above the curve D, I would have been exempted. But now I'm falling on below the curve, not even on the curve. So below the curve. Below the curve, it means you are not getting exempted. But if you can see, there's a two point on uh, the, the red line I, I drew on this curve, you can see in this screen, one of them is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, which is my minimum design metal temperature for this pressure vessel. And the other one is 14 degree Fahrenheit, which exactly is on the curve. So this is, says to me, if my minimum design metal temperature would have been 14 degree Fahrenheit instead of minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, I would have been exempted right away because you can use this material 
SA516 grade 70, which is belongs to the curve D uh, to the uh, to the 14 degree Fahrenheit with the this thickness 3.25, with a thickness of 3.25 without any impact testing and you could get exempted from the impact testing but you can see we are below the curve uh, if you go to the left side of the curve as you can see in the screen you can see when the when the uh, thickness uh, reduced and the, the condition gets better it means you can use the material material on a lower uh, temperature when the thickness goes high so you actually having an issue so since my th temperature uh, my, my thickness here my wall thickness is in here is 3.25 inch my hands are tight in here so I can't get exempted by the UCS 66A and you can see in here that uh, uh, as we are in the below the curve by the way the, the ASME code section 8 division 1 to make it convenient to use and avoid any drawing the line and crossing the curve and might be uh, some errors happens and then they are changed and converted that curve to a table and they uh, projected all the points which is falls on the curve and then created the curve that you can see in my right and you can see uh, uh, there's a four uh, curve uh, curve uh, columns or, or uh, in, in the in the table or in the chart curve a curve b and curve c and curve d and and then the left hand there is a thickness value so you can find out uh, any materials assigned to the curve d what is the minimum design metal temperature that uh, that you can use that material without any impact testing like the one in the screen you can see for a thickness of 1.125 inch you can use this material without any impact testing up to minus 26 degree fahrenheit based on the chart so this is this chart is not a new thing this is the same curve they just converted to the chart to be more convenient to be used so if i uh, my pressure vessel would have been 1.125 inch I would have been uh, used this material without any impact testing uh, up to minus 26 degree Fahrenheit so let's let's go forward and there's another screenshot from this table you can see in this screen and uh, you can see the thickness of 2.375 inch and uh, in the curve D you can see I can use this material up to two degree Fahrenheit without impact testing but uh, this is not gonna work for me my thickness is 3.25 inch and my minimum design metal temperature is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit now we are moving forward and and uh, another screenshot from this chart indicates to you that the for thickness of 3.25 I can use this material up to 14 degree Fahrenheit without impact testing so 14 degree Fahrenheit and I am in the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit that I can use this material now we have to go uh, to the next step to see if we can get exempted by the UCS 66P because we couldn't get exempted from the UG20F we couldn't get exempted from the UCS 66A and we couldn't get exempted from the uh, UCS uh, sorry 66a now we are going to try to UCS 66b which is a coincident ratio uh, as, a, as a mix of the calculation and assessment the coincident ratio is the curve that you can see in my right we're gonna calculate a coincident ratio a formula is there and then we can see if we can get some reduction in our minimum design metal temperature I mean those 14 degree Fahrenheit that you see in the chart to see if we can get some bonuses uh, from this chart and to get exempted from the impact testing the point is in here we never uh, gonna ask you to calculate the coincident ratio it's very design implication on the uh, calculation of the coincident ratio coincident ratio always is going to be given to you and then you're going to ask you to uh, look at the temperature reduction or adjusted minimum design metal temperature but just to know what's the concept of the 
coincident ratio uh, I, I calculated, you can see in my right, is that, you know, we designed this pressure vessel at 700 degree Fahrenheit and our allowable stress was 18,100 degree Fahrenheit. But when we are talking about the bridal fracture and minimum design metal temperature, is it for some condition that this pressure vessel is going to work at minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, right? And at the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, our allowable stress is not 18,100. Our allowable stress is a 20,000 uh, 20, PSI. So, uh, 18,100 PSI was the allowable stress at the 700 degree Fahrenheit, which we uh, read that value from the ACM section to part D. But at the uh, room temperature or minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, our allowable stress is going to be 20,000 degree Fahrenheit. And you remember from the design formula, they are in the opposite direction. When you consider the uh, uh, the higher allowable stress, you're going to get a pressure vessel with the lower thickness. So we are going kind of uh, get some credit for that. And other credit that you're going to get in here is that, you know, your actual thickness, uh, you know, uh, uh, the nominal thickness is 3.25 inch. But uh, it, it wasn't a 3.25 inch over T minimum. We, we calculated something and then we added to the corrosion allowance. And because that value wasn't available in market, we, we got the material with the higher thickness. So we are going to get for a little that thickness that we, we, because of the market availability, because that number came with the decimals and, and some digits. So you can't, you can't get that plate with that thickness. You know, when you calculate something, you can't get the, exactly the same things that you calculated. You have to get a, a higher thickness to match with the, what you calculated. So you are going to, the, to get a little bit credit for that as well. The, another credit that you're going to get in here is that, you know, your design pressure is 900 PSI at the 700 degree Fahrenheit. But we're talking about here about the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit. And it's, 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 uh, like that, that when your uh, pressure come, uh, when your temperature comes down, normally your pressure also uh, decreases. So your temperature decreases, your pressure also is going to be decreases, and then might be at the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit, your, uh, your pressure is not. Uh, 900 psi. It might be 600 psi. I made this assumption and I calculated the coincident ratio that you can see uh, the formula on on the left side of the curve, which is a uh, coincident ratio is equal to t uh, TR multiplied to the E joint efficiency and divided by TN nominal minus the corrosion allowance. And then, as you can see in the calculation in the right, I, I calculated the coincident, uh, I, I calculated uh, first required thickness, and then I calculated the coincident ratio. And you can see then the required thickness, I calculated the thickness for the 1.83 inches. As, you, as I mentioned before, nobody expects you to calculate this. Uh, 1.83 and here is our uh, uh, the calculation for the condition I told you 600 psi instead of the 900 psi 20,000 psi for allowable stress instead of the 18,100 psi and then I, I got a, a thickness of 1.83. Now I'm going to calculate the coincident ratio and 1.83 divided by 3.125 where did I get the 3.125? I deducted the corrosion allowance from the nominal thickness. I put on the denominator and the numerator is the value that we calculated for a TR. And then I get a coincident ratio of the 0 0.58. 0 0.58. As I uh, said, uh, you always is going to be given to you a coincident ratio. This process that I explained just to let you know what's the concept behind of the co coincident ratio and then you can uh, comprehend that in an easier way. Nobody expects you to calculate the coincident ratio. You're going to get always the coincident ratio and going to ask you to determine how much we are getting the bonus for that. Now let's see how much bonus we can get for uh, these credits that I mentioned to you allowable stress and then the, the higher thickness that we have in here 
and then uh, the lower uh, pressure you can see i look at the point 58 i draw a horizontal line it's crossed the curve at some point and i draw a line from the cross point to uh, cross the lower uh, the the horizontal axis and it's going to cross that at the 42 degree fahrenheit so actually i'm getting 42 degree fahrenheit bonuses for this so uh, what was our uh, temperature that we could use this material with the 3.25 inch without impact testing was the uh, 14 degree Fahrenheit now I'm going to deduct 42 degree Fahrenheit from the 14 just because I'm getting some uh, credit in here some bonuses in here so my new uh, temperature is going to be new MDMT without impact testing okay you always have an MDMT which dep depends on your uh, user uh, that's provided to you for designing a pressure vessel or you are having another MDMT that you always talks about that you know my MDMT without impact testing is this so it means this is the lower temperature that I can have without impact testing and here is minus 28 degree Fahrenheit it means I can I this is a new adjusted value your previous value was 14 degree Fahrenheit now your adjusted value is minus 28 degree Fahrenheit because of those credit that I mentioned in here it means I can use this pressure vessel without any impact testing up to minus 28 degree Fahrenheit without any impact testing but this is not going to work for me because my MDMT is minus 30 degree Fahrenheit and this is minus 28 degree Fahrenheit and I'm short by 2 degree Fahrenheit so I just was a, some kind of an improvement in here I came from the 14 degree Fahrenheit to the minus 28 degree Fahrenheit very close but actually I couldn't get exempted from uh, UCS 66B and I have to move forward to see if I can get exempted by the next item which is a UCS 68C what's the UCS 68C says, says this this is a this is a, a, a bonus only can be uh, given to the P number one material our p number material our material is a p number one so we might use this uh, this uh, option ug 68 c says if you are not required to perform post weld heat treatment and you voluntarily perform the post weld heat treatment i give you another 30 degree fahrenheit bonus it means your minus 28 degree fahrenheit can be deducted to the minus 30 degree Fahrenheit and goes way 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 below uh, minus 30 degree Fahrenheit which is a great and then you can get exempted but there is a one issue in here we are having a requirement for post weld heat treatment for this certain pressure vessel if you remember our pressure vessel is lethal services toxic material and it was a code requirement to perform the post weld heat treatment when your service is a, a lethal uh, services so we can't we can't use this choice also we are affected with the, another things with the thickness requirement if you remember we have to uh, perform post weld heat treatment when our thickness is over 1.25 inch so our thickness is 3.25 inch so for two reasons we have to perform post weld heat treatment first because of the service and second because of the uh, because of the thickness so but the, the, the code on the UCS 68C says if the PWHT is not a requirement for you and you are doing these things by your own choice and voluntarily but I am it is the voluntarily or by the choice by the, my own option is not going to work in here because I am the compelled and forced to do the PWHT so 